Okay, so here we're going to show you how to use tail scale to access your tiny pilot and, and then the computer, of course, that you want to get hold of. So let's start um, right here where it says get started. So here it wants you to pick an identity provider, which is kind of new. You can click more, learn more about what an identity provider is. Uh, most people have one of these accounts. I'll go ahead and sign up with my Google account. And we're in. All right, I'm on a Windows computer. I'm going to go ahead and download that to start things off. Uh, this will presumably be the client that I'll be accessing my install. Authorization needed. Click the tail scale icon to log in. So I'll take a look at that now. So I see these gray dots in the lower right hand corner. Right click on the icon, choose login. I'll select my Google account here as I did before. Well, there it is. I'll close that window. And now if I look in the uh, lower right corner, The dots now have some lights on them, so that would indicate that uh, it must be active. It shows an IP address associated with this computer. So now the next thing I'm going to do is install it in the Tiny Pilot. So what, what you've got to do first is SSH into your Tiny Pilot. To start with, we're going to open up a program called Advanced IP Scanner. If you haven't heard of it, great program for quickly scanning your network and showing you your IP addresses, MAC addresses, brands, everything. So we're going to scan our network and very quickly it tells us that the tiny pilot is on a local IP of 192.168.89.4. I'm going to right click and copy that IP address and we'll close it. Next thing you do, do is open up your SSH program I use a MOBA X term, which uh, is a multi putty version, and I'm going to create a new session. And we'll plug in the IP, port 22, we'll give it a bookmark name, and call it Tiny Pilot Local. And OK that. All right, it logs in, asterisk asks us for the uh, username, of course. The username is pilot. And the password, evidently, it had remembered from a previous session that I've been involved with, which is just as well. I, I don't really need to put that out in the public. And that's it. That's how you would SSH into your tiny pilot. And now let's go ahead and install Tailscale. Okay, on Linux, you can go here for the instructions, tailscale.com slash download slash Linux. We're going to go ahead and carry that out on the first line. Curl, and then that first string all the way to focal.gpg, focal and add. Got an OK on that. Next line. Got an, uh, everything okay on that? We're going to do an update which will install Tailscale. Actually, I take that back. An update will just update, and this will install Tailscale. And this command is supposed to authenticate the machine. Uh, and connect my machine to the tail scale network. So it's given us a, a URL to click on. We'll grab that, stick it in the browser, sign in with uh, Google in my case. And that's all there is to that. It went past it successfully. OK, 
Okay, now we can find out the IP address that Tailscale has assigned to this computer using Tailscale IP-4, and it tells us this is the IP for this machine, the Tiny Pilot. So at this point, we've been given an IP address for our Tiny Pilot, our Linux or Raspberry Pi, and an IP for the Windows client machine. Let's take a let's log into Tailscale and see what they have for us here. So before we had nothing, now we have two machines showing up, the Tiny Pilot and the uh, the Windows computer that I create that I'm looking at right now. And the IP address is associated with them. Now let's go ahead and try to access the Tiny Pilot from this Windows computer. I'm going to copy, it gives me the option just by hovering over it, copy that IP address. I'll open up another tab here, click that in, and you notice I get nothing. I expected to get nothing because the port number has not been appended to this. You've got to remember to append the port number. Now out of the box, that port number for you is going to be uh, 443. It could be 80. It's either 80 or 443. I think it's, a, it's going to be the 443 for SSL. However, I purposely changed my ports and I am using port 8593. All right, so here goes our first effort using the tiny scale IP address. It brings us there straight away. I'll choose advance accept the risk. So there we have it. Using their IP, we're able to access the device. Now, does this work off-premises from any computer anywhere? Okay, Wi-Fi is turned off. We're going to look for the app called Tailscale. Android would work the same way. If you want to put it on a phone, Okay, we'll go ahead and download that. And I have downloaded this once in the past, so uh, Apple already knows that, so they didn't hit me up for approval. We'll go ahead and allow that. Enter in my uh, iPhone passcode, and that'll allow me to access the VPN application, which Tailscale is. Okay, I'm choosing don't allow on this. I'm going to copy the URL for the Tiny Pilot, which is the same one we use in Windows. Open up a browser and plug it in there. You can tell I've been here once before, but it works. Um, we're going to hit proceed. And we are at the Tiny Pilot in my office using a cell phone off of the company network. Entering in the credentials, click login, and the tiny pilot magic is before us. Work like a charm. As you can see, the Wi-Fi is turned off. So that's a wrap. That's how it works. I'm happy to say that it works great inside your network. It works great wherever you happen to be, as long as you have their software installed on your client device, you can access one of your other devices remotely. Piece of cake. No hard coding in uh, static IP addresses, port forwarding, any of that kind of stuff. It just works, as they say. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.